Hello, thank you for coming here today. Um, my name is Andy Smith, and this is Robin Clark, like, like we said. Uh, we're both actually maintenance engineers at Toyota Manufacturing UK, and we both competed in World Skill Sao Paulo this summer and achieved a medal of excellence. So there are two Toyota Manufacturing UK plants in the UK. One of them is based in Derbyshire at the Burniston plant, and this is where the vehicle manufacturing is based, and we make the Avensis, Aris, and Aris hybrid vehicles. Engine manufacturing is based in North Wales, and that's where me and Andy both work at the moment. And this is where the standard and the hybrid engines are made. Toyota Manufacturing UK is the most experienced out of all the European plants, and apprentice training is carried out over both Deeside and Burniston. OK, so we're just going to show you a short little video about the manufacturing process at Toyota. Okay, so I've already introduced sort of who we are, but where did it all start? So I attended a small primary school about 30 miles away from the Burniston plant, and there's only about 55 students. And like any other young, young lad, I was always up sort of playing football, playing with Lego, uh, action man, like it says on the, uh, on the slide. Um, after that, I went to a larger secondary school, about 1,400 students, studied the core subjects, so the English, math, science, also the technology, resistant materials, which is sort of woodwork, metalwork, some of you might study that at the moment. I didn't really know what I wanted to do after my GCSEs, and I was told that sort of university was the route for me. So I did AS levels. So I went on to do that and studied four subjects, including math mechanics. Again, still didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that AS levels really weren't for me, which is when I saw the uh, Toyota apprenticeship. So four years later, I'm now a fully qualified Toyota maintenance member. And I've got a HNC in engineering, and like I said earlier, I'm dying of excellence at World Skills in Sao Paulo. So when I was younger, I was always really active, and I was busy in clubs and sporting clubs. So I knew I wanted a job that was more hands-on. I didn't want to be sat down all day, but throughout my whole education, I was never really sure on what I wanted to do. So I did my GCSEs. I did really well in my GCSEs. So I was told that I should go, to, go on to further education, which is where I did my A-levels. So I was doing my A-levels, looking at what type of job I wanted to do, but I really, really was never sure. And I was always told, oh, you're intelligent, you'll go to university. And I was told so much about university whilst I was at sixth form. I even visited universities. But then I thought, there's really no point me going if I'm going to get a big debt and I'm not passionate about the degree that I want to do. So this is when I looked at going into an apprenticeship instead. I've always liked the more logical subjects at school, such as maths and science, so that's what sent me down the engineering route, and I've actually found that I'm really interested in it, so don't be afraid to try something new. Before I started my apprenticeship, I'd never done anything in engineering, and I just thought, it sounds interesting, I'll give it a go. So do go around today and have a go at different things, because it will surprise you at what you actually find interesting. And same as Andy, I've now finished my apprenticeship. I'm a qualified maintenance technician at Toyota. I'm currently studying for my HNC as well. And I'll see all the half of the team that competed in Brazil with Andy to gain the medallion of excellence. So a lot of people aren't really sure of what a modern apprenticeship consists of. And I, I was the same. I, I really didn't realize how diverse they were. So there's a lot of technical as well and personal skills to a modern apprenticeship. For example, in our four-year apprenticeship, We've trained to become multi-skilled maintenance technicians. So this means that we do electrical, mechanical, fluid power, programming, a really, really diverse variety of topics. So we cover subjects such as welding, machining, sensors and safety circuits, and we build up a lot of problem-solving skills along the way. 
As well as this, we develop a lot of personal skills. So in the second year of our apprenticeship, we went to the Lake District for a week where we attended an Outward Bound project and we did a lot of team building activities and a lot of personal development and you really had to motivate and push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And also, every apprentice has to be involved in a project within the community. And in this, you have to plan, budget, and implement a project within the community, such as YMCA. So that might sound like a lot. So welding, machining, things that you probably know nothing about at the moment. But don't worry. The apprenticeship starts right at the bottom. All you need is a few characteristics that are up there. So a passion for learning is the big one. If you're happy to go to work and learn something new every day, then you'll be absolutely fine on an apprenticeship. Another, another good thing, commitment. So if you've got any part-time jobs or anything, it does show commitment to employers. Uh, you have to be able to work part of a team, communicate with people. Uh, if you're accepting of a challenge as well, there's nothing worse than going to work and knowing, doing the same thing day in, day out. So a challenge is always good, really. So like I said, everyone sort of starts off at the bottom knowing nothing. So the first year of our apprenticeship, we sort of give the trainees the knowledge behind uh, sort of the machines and what they're going to be doing in the job, as well as a sort of an insight into the business as well. The second year, you sort of build on that and you start to begin to understand more about what you've learned in the first year. So it's just a next step up from, from where you were. This might be the sort of place that university gets you. So you'll, you'll know your subject, but you've not really sort of worked in the area. This is where apprenticeships sort of come into their own because once you start putting that knowledge into practice, it sort of gives you the skill, the will, the belief, and even the confidence to become an expert in your field. And that's really what makes you an asset to any sort of big organization such as Toyota. And doing an apprenticeship, your career really doesn't have to end when your apprenticeship ends. There's a lot of other options to continue your education if that's what you want to do. So we've done a level two and level three MVQ as part of our apprenticeship. And if you want to stop there, that's fine. If that's a job you'd like to do, that's how far you can take it. But if you do want to go further, there's a lot of other options. So we've been offered the chance to do a level four HNC in general engineering. As I say, Andy mentioned he's completed his and I'm currently doing mine. And after that, as long as you work hard and show that you're committed, you may get even more options such as leadership programs, degree schemes and advanced technical training. We've also been lucky enough to compete in World Skills UK and where we're successful enough to progress onto the World Skills competition in Brazil, Sao Paulo, this summer. So Andy's going to tell you a bit more about that. Okay, so we've mentioned World Skills, but what sort of really is it? You might have seen some competitions around, you might have seen some people welding or on the mechatronics stand, which is what we competed in. Um, but where sort of our journey started here uh, three years ago. So we came and we had a look at the competition and we sort of we took part in a separate selection competition. After that, we've gone from six people to four people within Toyota, and we train and train and train to go to a squad selection event. So I sort of liken the process to like the X Factor. There's loads and loads of different sort of stages you get to. You sort of compete again, and a few sort of fall by the wayside, and a few get through, and eventually you end up with the whole sort of team. So after our squad selection, we had, what, 14 months of like complete intense training. And it took us all over the world. It's taken us to Japan twice. It's taken us to the Netherlands, Northern, Southern Ireland, and eventually, like we said, to Brazil. So after, obviously, all the training, it's all very, very stressful, and there's a, all building up to a team selection event. So this is where they pick the final two to compete in Mechatronics uh, to take to Brazil. So me and Robin were both lucky enough, or skilled enough, depending on which way you look at it, uh, to get through to that, and we actually did compete in Brazil. So in Brazil, the competition, it lasted for four days, and there was over 1,186 competitors representing 59 countries from across the entire world, and this is in 50 different skill areas. Team UK consisted of 40 competitors, and we entered 36 different skills. But being part of Team UK, it's not just about the technical training. There's a lot of other things that we did on the way. So before we went to Brazil, we did a lot of team building activities at Loughborough University. So that was a lot of personal development and teamwork skills that we did. So we saw psychologists to understand how we work under pressure and how to cope with things like that. So there's a lot of other personal skills that we gained from doing world skills. So we'll explain our journey to Sao Paulo. Um, before we flew out to Brazil, the whole team met in London for an overnight stay and we had a formal send-off event where our families were invited to London and Theo Pafitas came and gave us a speech and wished us well and presented us with our World Skills UK enamels which we were to wear to the ceremonies. Once we arrived in Brazil, we did a school visit. 
And then every country visits a different school, and our school had been studying about the UK, and they demonstrated what they'd learnt, and also gave us an insight into the Brazilian culture, which, let me tell you, is very interesting, very vibrant and very bright. The competition itself lasted for four days, and felt probably more like four weeks. It was a long and tough four days, but it was some of the most rewarding four days of my life. It was challenging, but it, the benefits that you gain from it at the end of it is just the experience of being there and competing on a world platform against countries from across the globe is just surreal. We competed against 36 other countries from across the world in our competition. But the highlight of the week for me has to be the closing ceremony. So this is where they announce the results and they award all the medals. There's a really, really good atmosphere and a great team spirit amongst Team UK cheering each other on. And we did really well. Team UK came seventh in the world with 32 out of 40 of the competitors coming home with some form of medal or medallion. Okay, so you're all at the skills show, probably looking of sort of what to do after you finish school. So we've just got a little bit of advice. We're not here to preach to you or anything like that, but it is important. Do your best in your exams. Most apprenticeships sort of ask for four GCSEs, A star to C. So if that's the minimum you can get, then that's fine, okay? Also, sort of demonstrate behavior. So join clubs. So join social clubs, join a sports club, scouts, guides, do volunteering projects. It's all really good for your personal development as well as sort of your technical knowledge and skill. Also, think about the interview process. So if you, jo if you are part of any clubs or you do any sort of volunteering roles, think, take, think about newspaper cuttings or for example, if you've done presentations to people or anything like that, it's all, employers are always looking for things to show that you are a well-rounded person and not just sort of the cleverest guy out there. So if you want to know anything else, there's uh, the website, apprenticeships.org. Uh, me and Robin are knocking around sort of the show all day. We'll be on, probably on the Toyota stand or the Skills Champions stand. Uh, or you can stick around and ask some questions after this. So thank you very much for listening.